I'd like to welcome you to the midweek Bible study of the Mount Carmel Church. We are glad that you are watching tonight, and we just thank you. Thank again for technology that we can uh, bring our midweek Bible study over Facebook and YouTube. And I would encourage you to, if uh, you've been watching each and every week, to uh, ask somebody else or tell somebody else about our midweek Bible study and encourage them to, to watch along with you. And then after our time together, even talk about what we've looked at in our Bible study that we've had. We've been looking at this area of walk the talk. You know, it's easy for all of us. And maybe this week you've had that time where you've told somebody something, uh, you know, maybe in their life that, boy, you know, hey, it would be great if you would do it this way or, or you're helping them along as, a, as someone that they look up to. You're helping them along. But, you know, it's, it's hard in our lives uh, to walk that talk. We can say it very easy to say. It's very easy to coach somebody. It's very easy to tell somebody, you know, some things that uh, they should be doing. But are we willing to walk that talk also? Well, the book of 1 Peter has been a challenge to all of us as we, and an encouragement to us. As we look at many things that Peter has been telling us and talking about and, and showing us, and we had some review last week and at the end of our study walk the talk here as we finish up the book of first peter we'll have that uh review again just to kind of enforce what peter is showing to us because we see peter is someone that uh, many of us can relate to peter's one of those persons that um is kind of bold he's been bold all his life and he he did things his own way and he thought people needed him a lot but then as his life went on and after uh, the time when he uh, denied Christ, I think his life started to change. His life started to turn around, and he saw the need for a true relationship with Jesus Christ in his life. And uh, very practical stuff that we've looked at, because he talks a lot about trials, and we are all going to have trials. But what does our life look like as we're going through those trials? Well, tonight we want to continue our study in 1 Peter chapter 5, and kind of it's kind of the second week of, of chapter 5. In fact, there'll be a third week yet next week, and then a week of review after that. But in 1 Peter chapter 5, we find three ways that we can stand strong. And last week we saw that, the first one, faithful leaders help the struggling Christian to stand. You know, Peter starts out that chapter by talking about the leaders of the church, the elders. And think about some of the things he writes here in this chapter. Because it's a chapter that, that much is, is there because he has experienced it. He has walked through it himself. He was a, an eyewitness to it. Have you ever been an eyewitness to something? And you talk to somebody else about it, or they say something to you about something that's happened, and you say, well, I was an eyewitness to that. I was right there, and let me tell you how this took place, or, or what I saw there. Well, as we look at this chapter, we see that Peter was that. He was an eyewitness. You know, he talks in verse 1 about the glory to be revealed, because as we we looked, Peter understood what that glory was because he saw Jesus display his glory on the Mount of Transfiguration. If you have your uh, a pen or something with you, you can write these verses down to look at this, but Luke chapter 9 we looked at last week, verses 28 through verse 56. We also see, saw that he wrote in verse 2 about shepherding God's flock. You know, Peter would have remembered Jesus in John chapter 10, calling himself the Good Shepherd. We looked at John chapter 10, verses 7 through 18. We also saw that Peter would have remembered Jesus' call to him in John 21 to be a shepherd to Jesus' flock. John chapter 21, verses 15 through verse 17. We also saw that he writes in verse 3 about not lording it over others. And Peter would have call, recalled Jesus' lesson in Luke chapter 22 about true greatness, about being a servant, and how that each and every one of us should be a servant. And I'm sure that he would have reflected back on Luke chapter 22, verses 24 through 30. 
We also see where he writes in verse 5 about clothing ourselves with humility. You know, Peter would have remembered the incident of John 13 of Jesus taking the towel and humbling himself and washing Peter's feet in John 13, verses 4 through 17. We also see it in verse 8, and we won't study this tonight or look at this tonight, but where he tells us to beware of Satan in Luke chapter 22, verses 31 and 32, but we see here in verse 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. You know, Satan is real, and Peter wants us to see that. You know, as we, we look at last week, and we look at that area as we, we've called it, you know, we see three things here in this passage of Scripture in, in chapter 5. But, you know, as we, we look at that, we think about faithful leaders. And what it means to be a faithful leader, we should all be faithful leaders that are willing to help the struggling Christian to stand. You know, I think many times we, we in our lives, say, well, that's the pastor's job. Or God could never use me. But throughout Scripture, we see that each and every one of us can be great leaders. We can be leaders that serve Christ in a very miraculous way. And tonight, we want to just spend a little bit of time back on this first one. Because I, I heard a, a pastor once say this about Christians. And we're going to talk about being a sweet Christian. What does that mean to be a sweet Christian? Because we are all leaders. We should all be leaders in Christ. Our spiritual lives should be, should be in, and show leadership to others. We should be willing to come alongside of others and bear one another's burdens. But I have a question for you tonight as we, we think about this. Who is it that God has placed in your life for you to come alongside of? You know, who is that person right now when I say that, that, that God has placed in your life that you can come alongside of them? Or maybe, maybe you say, well, well, God has not placed anybody in my life right now. But as we, we think of that, God places people in our lives for very special reasons. They don't just happen to come by circumstance. They are here. And God has a very special plan for those people that He places in our lives. You know, God wants to use each of us for His glory. Each of us can seek to lead and help and encourage others. Have you ever encouraged somebody? You know, I, I don't know how many times in my life that I've had somebody say a kind word or, or maybe send me a little card or, or maybe just come up and say, hey, I've been praying for you, and, and truly mean that they were praying for me. But you know, how can we help others and encourage others? And we can think of a lot of ways. Well, that's what this passage is, is talking about. The first part of it is, as we look at these three things that uh, Peter's pointing out to us, the first one being that godly leaders will help and instruct others. But let me read uh, chapter 5, verses 1 through verse 11. So if you have your Bibles, please follow along. If you have somebody with you watching or, or listening, please share your Bible with them if they don't have one. Or if you have a tablet or, or your phone and you can get on an app that, that goes to 1 Peter. We're going to be in 1 Peter chapter 5. Verses 1 through 11. So let me read this to you. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder and a witness of sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Likewise, ye younger, submit yourselves unto the elder. 
Yea, all of you, be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility. For God resisteth the proud, and covereth grace, or giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, <clears throat> casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the grace or but the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, maketh, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. You know, as a Christian, how good of a job do you do of caring for others? You know, we'd like to think that everyone should kind of focus on us. You know, today in the world, everybody is, is talking about, well, what's in it for me? You know, I, don't do anything unless there's something that's going to benefit me. You know, I came in and, and no one shook my hand, maybe, or attitude. And I get kind of mad about that, or my attitude goes down. Or I don't like the songs that, that we picked in church this week, or, or someone was sitting in my seat. Can you believe that? Someone had enough nerve to sit in my seat or my pew in the church. You know, sometimes we come in with that attitude, don't we? Or we come in with that attitude, well, I saw so-and-so and they, they never said a word to me. I don't understand what I did to them. You know, we all have that attitude of, of kind of all about self. But as Christians, we need to instead think of others. Is there someone I can greet this morning? Or is there someone that, that God has placed on my heart? Or does anyone have a heavy heart? Or can I pray with someone? Or how can I encourage someone? You know, the Bible is filled with one another commands. We are to be devoted to one another. We're to be on, we are to honor one another. We're to live in harmony with one another. We're to love one another. We should stop passing judgment on one another. We should make every effort to live at peace with one another. Accept one another. Instruct one another. Greet one another with a kiss. Wait for each other. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive one another. Consider others better than yourself. Don't lie to one another. Encourage one another. Spur one another on, in on love and good deeds. Carry each other's burdens. Be patient with one another. Speak truthfully to one another. Pray for each other and have concern for one another. You know, there are many one another's in God's Word that take the focus off of us and place it on who He is and who He can be in our lives so that we can show that to others. You know, when we care for one another, we will each do a good job of being a shepherd to one another. Have you ever heard about the, the body neighborhood? It's a little illustration, a little story that I once heard that kind of stuck in my mind. Because we all live in a body neighborhood. Well, Fred somebody, and Thomas everybody, and Susan anybody, anybody, and Joe nobody were neighbors. But they were not like you and me. They were odd people and most difficult to understand. The way they lived was a shame. All four belonged to the same church, but, but you would not have enjoyed worshiping with them. Everybody went fishing on Sunday or stayed home to visit with friends. Anybody wanted to worship but was afraid somebody would speak to him. So guess who went to church? Nobody. Really, nobody was the only, was the only decent one of the four that went to church. 
Nobody did the visitation. Nobody worked on the church building. And once they needed a Sunday school teacher, everybody thought anybody would do it. And anybody thought that somebody would do it. And you know who did it? That's exactly right. Nobody. You know, it happens that a, a fifth neighbor, an unbeliever, moved in, into that area. Everybody thought that somebody should try to win him to Christ. And anybody could have made an effort. You probably know who won him. Nobody. This little parable brings, or this little story brings to, to focus again the fact that each of us is personally responsible for God's work. You know, if we leave it for somebody or everybody or anybody, nobody will do it. You know, I heard a pastor once say that we should be sweet Christians. As, I, as we look at this first point that Peter's pointing out, and our, our study tonight is, is kind of brief, but I, I, I thought we needed to, to have this time of just thinking about this. And once I heard this about we should be a sweet Christian, I thought, boy, you know, that really applies to what Peter is pointing out to us here. And how important that is. And then we want to take the remaining part of our time and, and pray for school. School is starting up in many of our areas. And maybe you live in an area right now that school's already started up. Or college has started for some. And I know it's a very anxious time. And, and we need to be, we're going to close in prayer today. Praying for our school systems. But are you a sweet Christian? And as we look at chapter 5, we can apply what we see in chapter 5 to this area of being a sweet Christian. The first one, as we look at this word sweet, we want to use each uh, of the letters in the word sweet to kind of put it around this chapter 5 that we've seen. And going back to that first point that we're looking at, at the leadership about being a leader and being willing to share with others, being willing to reach out with others. But we should be a sweet Christian. The S in sweet stands for shepherd. We see in verse 2 where it says, Feed the flock of God which is among you. You know, we, we know that a shepherd is somebody that leads. A pastor is called to be a shepherd. Because he leads the flock, the, the local body of believers that are, that are there with him. He is the leader. He is the shepherd. Our Heavenly Father is our shepherd. And how that we looked at passages of Scripture last week talking about God being our shepherd. But you know that each and every one of us can be shepherds as Christians. As we reach out to others... As it says in verse 2, feed the flock of God which is among you. Be willing to feed that flock. Be willing to come alongside of somebody. And be willing to shepherd them. So the S in sweet stands for shepherd. The W is for willing. Peter writes in verse 2, not because you must, but because you are willing. As God wants you to be willing. Look at this again. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight, thereof not by constraint, but willingly. In other words, not doing it grudgingly. Not doing it because someone wanted you to do it. But doing it willingly. You know, when we think about caring for one another, we want to do it out of a willing heart. Not out of a sense of obligation. You don't have a grudging heart when it comes to serving God and others. Do it willingly. You know, we don't do it out of duty, but out of desire. There's a whole lot of difference between duty and desire, isn't it? You know, I don't know about when you were growing up, or maybe you've told your children, hey, go clean up your room, and you need to do it quickly and do it now. That's kind of cleaning up your room out of duty. But how many of us have been surprised when we went into our children's rooms and seen them all cleaned up and, and, and our child is standing there smiling and saying, Mom or Dad, I cleaned up my room. You know, it's, a, it's an illustration to show us that we should want to serve God, but do it willingly. Don't do it out of duty. Don't do it out of a check-the-box type attitude. 
but out of a desire. So we should have a, a willing, we should have a willing heart. We should be willing to be a shepherd. We should be the W and sweet willing. The first E is for eager. You know, Peter writes, not greedy for money, but eager to serve. <coughs> Excuse me. In verse 2 again, it says, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. We serve because we are eager, not because we are enticed. You know, I don't know how many of you I, I know with grandchildren from time to time. I'll, I'll say, if you'll do this, your granddad, which they call me Opa, I say, I say, well, if you do this, I'll give you a few cents, or I'll give you this, or give you that, if you, if you help me out here. You know, how many of us in our Christian lives wait to see what benefit there is for us to do something for somebody else? I pray that we are eager to serve. We serve because we are eager, not because we've been enticed, because of someone saying, boy, look at them. Or thinking in ourselves, boy, when I get done with this, everybody's going to say, look at what they did. But we should be eager. So as we see in this passage that I'm looking at, in this word of being a sweet Christian, are we willing to shepherd, the S, are we willing to do it, the W, and E, are we eager to serve him? Well, we see that we have another E, but just before that, let's go back and look at the book of Colossians. Colossians. The book of Colossians chapter 3, and I want to read to you verses 22 through 24. Colossians chapter 3, verses 22 through 24. It says, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart fearing God. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. Verse 23 shows us that eagerness, doesn't it? And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. In other words, we're doing it because we want to do it. Not because someone is, is giving us something or there's notoriety that comes with it. We're doing it because we love God. You know, we need to have hearts that are eager to help. So we see shepherd. We see willing. We see the first E as eager. The second E is for example. You know, we are to live lives that are an example to others. Let me read verse 3. Neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being examples to the flock. What type of example do you set for others? That's been a question that I've even asked myself this week many, many times. What kind of example am I to others? What kind of example are you to others? You know, when a Christian who is struggling in a certain area looks at your life, well, they see that you live out what you're telling them. They should do that, that walk the talk that we've been talking about. Or do they see something else? You know, there's a saying that goes like this. Your walk talks and your talk talks. But your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Let me say that to you again. Your walk talks and your talk talks. But your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Now we're down to the T in sweet. Sweet Christian, remember? T is for triumph. Peter reminds us in verse 4 of that triumph that we can have. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. We are to live in triumph because we know what awaits us. We are to live in triumph because we know what is there for us. 
You know, Peter has already told the church in chapter 1 about the inheritance that can never perish. It can never spoil or it will never fade away. And it's there for, that's there in heaven for each and every one of us. You know, we can live in victory because we know no matter how difficult the things we face in this life, one day we will be rewarded with our faithfulness. And when Satan reminds you of your past, you can remind him of his future and your future. So as we look tonight in a very short Bible study, and we're going to go to the second one next week and work our way through chapter 5, because I think there's a lot here for us to, to kind of grab a hold of and apply to our lives. But Christians should be sweet Christians. We should be shepherds. We should be willing to serve God. We should be eager to serve God. We should be an example to serve God and be triumphant at what we know to be true and the promises that He has given to us. That we will spend eternity with Him. You know, those are things that we think about in our lives. And, and I just want us to really look at our lives. Are we a sweet Christian? Peter's pointing out to us some things in our lives as leaders. And we are all leaders. Are we willing to lead others? But are we a sweet Christian? And we, when we live like this, it can help struggling Christians, struggling Christian brothers and sisters to stand firm. Are you willing to help? Are you willing to be that sweet Christian? That's our Bible study for tonight. Next week we'll look at the second help that Peter tells us of that we find in this chapter 5. I would encourage you to continue to read chapter 5. Continue to read these verses and allow them to soak in. Allow God to, to work in your life through them. But let's have a word of prayer. We want to be praying here as we close tonight for our school systems, our schools, our children. And uh, let's just close in prayer with that tonight. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time which we've spent in your word. We just thank you for continued guidance in our lives. And dear Lord, we thank you for this passage of Scripture that we've kind of come to a slowdown in and, and looking at what Peter is, is talking about here and, and how that we can apply this thought of being a sweet Christian to being a sweet Christian in our lives and be willing to reach out to others. We are all leaders. And as Christ followers, as Christians, we are to make disciples and be willing to come alongside of disciples. But dear Lord, as we look at this, I just pray that each and every one listening and watching, it's a challenge to them, but also an encouragement to know that you are with us each and every step of the way. As we come to a time of closing tonight, Lord, I just want to pray for our schools. Many schools are getting ready to start this upcoming week, and dear Lord, we may have grandchildren going to school, we may have children going to school, we may have a, a friend that has children going to school, or we ourselves may know of somebody, a very personal friend that, that is a child that's going to school, or maybe a young adult that's going to college, or a teenager that's going to high school or, or middle school. Dear Lord, we want to take time tonight just to be praying for those that are going to school. Because there are many influences in the world today, we pray, dear Lord, that as Christians, they have a strong foundation under them as Christian parents and guardians, that we have placed that strong um, foundation under each and every one. Dear Lord, we ask for your guidance this week. We pray as parents, as guardians, as grandparents, as friends, dear lords of others, that we can be in encouragement and that we can be praying for these children, these teenagers, these young adults that are, that are going to school. We pray for those in college right now, dear Lord, that have already started, that for the first time maybe in their life, they're by themselves, they're making decisions for themselves, they're living a, uh, the way that, that I pray that they were brought up and have that foundation to understand that. Dear Lord, help them not to lose sight of you. 
Dear Lord, as many go to, to colleges that, that are teaching all kinds of things today, dear Lord, help them to stand on your word and be willing to understand uh, what your word says and be in your word. Help them to get into uh, something at their school, dear Lord, that would help them and encourage them to be in your word. We also pray, dear Lord, for those that um, are in high school and middle school. Dear Lord, we pray for these teenagers that uh, are now at, at maybe a different point in their life and are exposed to things all around them. We, we pray, dear Lord, that they again would stand strong, that in their, in their, uh, their friends, that they would be, be seen as, as someone that um, stands for truth. Dear Lord, we pray as, as peer pressure comes into their life that they would not falter in peer pressure and fall. Dear Lord, there's peer pressure in all of our lives, but dear Lord, we just pray that they would stand strong in your word. We also pray for those in elementary school, dear Lord, those children from those in fifth grade or sixth grade to those that are just starting school or maybe preschool. For the first time in their life, dear Lord, they're out or, or they've been going to school and Dear Lord, we just pray for them as they're around their friends and we pray that they could be a light in someone's life. We pray that as these minds are being molded and shaped and as they learn different things in school, that they would not lose sight of you and stand on your word. We also pray for those in school systems. I think of, of the support staff, dear Lord, and we just pray for each and every one of them as they're around children and helping children and doing different things in the school from those in the cafeteria to the, the maintenance department to those that clean the schools to those that are aides and, and different things within the school. Dear Lord, we pray that they would uh, be positive influences to our children. And dear Lord, that they would stand also as Christians for what they believe. We pray for teachers, dear Lord, that are on the front lines of of our school systems and dear Lord they're right there in front of these children these these moldable minds these moldable children dear Lord and teenagers that are there and and young adults at college but we pray for prep professors and teachers dear Lord that are that are Christians that they would stand for what they believe in and be willing to to stand firm and be willing to share in whatever way they can but dear Lord, we just pray for each and every teacher, each and every professor that our children, our, our young adults are exposed to. We also pray for those in administration, dear Lord. We pray for those that, that many times make decisions and lead school systems. Dear Lord, we pray for them. And as we see things coming in, filtering in from the world, dear Lord, we pray that also, not only the administrators, but the teachers would stand firm in what they know to be true and not to fall away, not to, to go in another direction. But dear Lord, we pray for these teachers as they stand strong for you. We pray for the administrators, dear Lord, that, that lead and guide. Dear Lord, we pray that they would have a heart for children as they do, but a heart that that is a, a Christian heart, and that they'd be there to help and to encourage. Dear Lord, we also pray for school boards. As decisions are made or things are passed down to them and they are, they are sometimes forced or told they need to apply this to their school systems, dear Lord, we pray that if there's something there that does not fit your word, that they would stand strong. I pray for that school board member that may be a Christian. <clears throat> dear Lord, that they would stand strong. And dear Lord, that um, in this nation, we would get back to a nation that is under God. Dear Lord, I pray for parents and guardians today. Dear Lord, that are leaving their children go uh, to school. Dear Lord, we pray as they get anxious, as parents get anxious, or as parents are, are at times anticipating this time of school, that, that they would stand strong in your word and Christians would come alongside of each other and, 
and stand firm together. We pray that they are praying for their children and young adults and, and teenagers, dear Lord, and that they are upholding them in prayer. I pray as churches that we are upholding them in prayer. But we thank you so much for who you are. And dear Lord, we, we pray as we've looked tonight at being a sweet Christian. I pray that we are a sweet Christian, willing to stand and willing to encourage those that we come in contact with. Dear Lord, we pray as schools start this week for safety, protection, and guidance in all that is said and done. Dear Lord, we just thank you for all that you do for us. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for watching and listening. Be praying for our school systems, our colleges as they start back up. That um, God would be found and seen in each one of them. And show first place in many children's lives, in teenagers' lives, in young adults' lives. And that there would be a revival throughout this nation that people are standing for Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching and listening, and may God bless.